My name is Pastor Samuel Shitote of the Fountain of Wisdom Chapel, Kapsoya Eldoret. Fountain of Wisdom Chapel is a church under the Fountain of Wisdom Ministries. And our mandate is to be able to reach to the unreached, church the unchurched, and establish believers in the knowledge of the truth. I take this opportunity to be able to welcome each and every one of us, wherever you are watching us, to our Easter Sunday. And I believe that God is going to be able to minister to you in a great way. I believe during this time, when we are going through challenges because of the outbreak of the coronavirus, the word through the servant of God, Reverend Funga Ewosho, will be able to minister to you and encourage you so that you can be able to come to a place where you will be above the threat and all the fears that the devil has brought in the world through this outbreak of coronavirus. I welcome all of you and I believe God will minister to you greatly in Jesus' name. Uh, this morning we are going to start our prayers by praying over specific issues that we desire God to be able to help us as far as this nation is concerned, as far as our families are concerned, as far as individual lives are concerned, even as far as the institutions are concerned. And uh, we will start by praying whereby we are requesting God to be able to have mercy upon us, to have mercy upon the nation. And we want just to return unto him and seek of his grace so that he may be able to help us during this time when we are going through these challenges. Uh, we are going to read from the book of Chronicles, that is 2 Chronicles chapter 7 from verses 13 to 16. The Bible says, When I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or set pestilence among my people. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, I will turn from their, and turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place for now i have chosen and satisfied this house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually from this portion of the scripture god is giving us a call to be able to return to him and we are returning to god in any way that we have gone astray from his path because God always will be able to orchestrate a path which we are supposed to go through. But if we forsake that particular path and take our own path, then many things can be able to happen because the enemy takes advantage of our disobedience to be able to bring things that will hinder us even from fulfilling the purpose of which God wants us to be able to fulfill. And that's why we are seeing that God is making a call to us that we may be able to return to him and we may be able to repent we may be able to turn away from our wicked ways and the bible says that when we do that then god is going to be able to hear us then god is going to be able to forgive our sins and god is going to be able to do what to heal our land and we are going to be able to see the restoration coming as far as our land is concerned in the name of jesus christ during this season i want to tell you that we need to be able to come unto the lord we need to be able to ask god to heal our land because our land is being devastated by this virus we call the coronavirus in the book of Hosea, chapter 6 verses 1 to 2 the bible says come and let us return to the lord for he has torn but he will heal us he has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up that we may live in his sight. So God is also making a call through his servant, the prophet Hosea, that we may be able to return to him. And if we return to him, he say that he's going to bind us up. And if we return to him, he's going to be able to revive us and is going to be able to heal us again 
So it's a call that we are asking that each and every one of us who is listening to me or watching wherever you are, you are right now, there is a call for us to be able to return to God. And we can be able to cry to God. We can ask God for his mercies and ask God for his intervention so that we can be able to be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me read another verse in the book of Isaiah 55 verses 7. Let the wicked forsake his way and the righteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord and he will have compassion on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon for he will abundantly pardon we believe God is able to pardon our sins God is able to forgive us God is able to restore us God is able to revive us so I want you to join me together even as we are making prayer to us our return to God this morning in the name of Jesus Christ father in the name of Jesus Christ we thank you because of the invitation that you have given us in the name of Jesus that we can be able to return unto you dear master we are praying that oh God in the areas that we have gone astray in terms of our walk with you God we are praying that you may have mercy upon us oh God of glory the areas of my father that we have forsaken your way and we have gone after our own way so God of glory we are returning unto you Jehovah Redeemer that you may forgive us that you may forgive our sins that you may even pardon our sins oh God of glory because your word has said that if we return to you dear master and even forsake our way so God of glory you are going to be able to heal our land oh God we are praying that dear master in the area so my father we have gone against your covenant oh God in the areas we have erred as far as our walk with you is concerned dear master we are pleading for your mercy so Jehovah God that you may be able to pardon our sins oh God we are praying that Jehovah Redeemer you may be able to avert this judgment or this particular scourge that has come against the land in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we are pleading your mercies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ even as we are making a decision to be able to return to you in our hearts oh my father we are praying that oh God you may forgive us oh God that you may be able my father to help us oh God to acknowledge oh God it is only you that my father that can be able to deliver us oh God I am praying for this nation oh God I am praying for the families oh God I am praying even for the church oh dear master that by your mercy so oh God you may forgive us so oh God that you may be able Lord Jesus Christ even to deliver us oh God even from the plague that has come upon the land that the plague that has come upon the families the plague that has come against even the entire world oh God then many nations are even mourning dear master father we are returning to you with our hearts oh god father i am praying that jehovah redeemer even the entire nation oh god may be able to see a reason oh my god where we can be able to return to you dear master because you have said that if we return unto you jehovah redeemer you are going to be able to heal us oh god you are going to be able to deliver us oh my father you are going to accept us oh jehovah redeemer you are going my father to heal even our land oh jehovah redeemer we are praying that dear master even for your mercy so oh God for the families so oh God that have lost even the loved ones so oh God for the families that are mourning right now Jehovah Redeemer we are asking for your mercy so oh God we are pleading for your mercies in the name of Jesus you may be able to restore them dear Lord you may be able to heal them Jehovah Redeemer you may be able to deliver them dear master you may be able to comfort them Jehovah God even as we are returning to you dear master we are pleading for your mercies Lord that your mercies which the Bible says endures forevermore God may be able to heal our land oh God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Father we pray for your mercies Father we pray Jehovah Redeemer that you may forgive our sins Lord Father you may accept us oh dear master that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we may have an opportunity oh God again to be able to walk in your ways in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we thank you my father because of hearing our prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we have believed and pray amen I want us to be able to pray also for uh, ask God to be able to uh, help us to overcome the spirit of fear uh, that has come against the land because of whatever that is happening fear has been able to grip the hearts of many people and because of that the enemy is taking advantage of that to be able to ravage many lives I want us to be able to read the book of Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 the Bible says fear not for I am with you 
be not dismayed for I am your God I will strengthen you yes I will help you I will uphold you with my righteous hand right hand Psalms 23 verses 4 to 7 verses 4 sorry the Bible says yeah though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me when you go to the book of Psalms 34 verses 4 the Bible says I sought the Lord and he had me and delivered me from all my fears so brethren I want us to be able to stand in faith and as we stand in faith that we may be able to come against the spirit of fear that the enemy is taking advantage against us against believers against those even who do not know the Lord against the institutions against the government I want us to be able to pray that instead of fear God is going to be able to fill us with faith in the name of Jesus because the Bible says that this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith we believe that through our faith in Christ Jesus we are able to conquer this in the name of Jesus Christ we take authority in the name of Jesus Christ against that particular spirit of fear in the name of Jesus Christ I want you to join as we are raising our faith as we are releasing our faith in the name of Jesus Christ that any kind of fear that is in our life shall be dealt with by the power of the Word of God father in the name of Jesus Christ we come again in the spirit of fear that has gripped the hearts of many we come against any kind of an attack through fear that is making Jehovah Redeemer even the church never to come to a place where it can be able to confront this particular attack that has come against the entire world father I want to pray that dear master that Lord your word O Jehovah Redeemer has given us victory over the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus that's why we are rising against fear fear in the families fear in the lives of individuals fear in the institutions fear in the government we are coming against this spirit in the name of Jesus fear you have no place in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ we counter you by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ and we are praying that we are arising in the faith in the name of Jesus Christ because we believe that oh God the word of God has given us victory over the power of fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Lord I am praying that let the power of God be able to establish us right now in the name of Jesus Christ I am praying for that family that is so much fearful because of whatever that is happening I am praying even for those who have lost their loved one through this coach that has come against the land in the mighty name of Jesus and I declare faith instead of fear in the name of Jesus Christ that we are arising in the power of the Holy Spirit because the Spirit of God is the one that is able to empower us in the name of Jesus Christ we declare that fear will diminish and faith will arise in our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ God build our hearts so God in the power of the Holy Spirit and we conquer fear in the name of Jesus Christ father we thank you because you have done it in Jesus mighty name I want us also to be able to pray for another prayer request I want us to be able to pray for the grace of protection protection upon our families protection upon our nation protection upon even our own institutions we want to declare the protection because God has given us protection even through his word as we read the book of Psalms 91 which is a scripture I believe most of us know and is a scripture that we are even confessing in this season the Bible says from verses 1 he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty I will say of the Lord he is my refuge and my fortress my God in him I will trust surely he will deliver me you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wing you shall take refuge his truth shall be your shield and your buckler you shall not be afraid of the terror of the night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that walks in darkness nor destruction that lay waste at noonday a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand but they shall not come near you only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked because you have made the Lord who is my refuge even the most high your dwelling place 
no evil shall befall you no nor shall any plague come near your dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in his in your all all in your ways in their hands they shall bear you up i want us to be able to declare this scripture as we meditate i want us to be able to confess these words i want this to be the scripture that you will be meditating every day in your life because when you meditate it helps you to be able to build faith in your heart and you are going to be able to experience the protection that comes because of this particular word that god has given us in the book of psalms 91 that the place the bible calls the secret place it is in christ jesus because the bible says we are hidden in christ in god and we can take that courage knowing that there is no way an evil can come to us why because we have been hidden by christ in god and in god we are safe in jesus name so i want us to be able to declare that we are safe why because we are hidden in god and the bible says that under his wings we take refuge so i want us to be able to raise our voice this morning as we declare this scripture in our lives because the bible says that he will deliver us from the snare of the fowler father in the name of jesus christ you have declared and you have said that in your word that you are our refuge lord you are our fortress because we trust in you jehovah god you have said that you are going to deliver us from the snare of the fowler and that's why we are praying that any kind of a snare that the enemy has waylaid against us we are delivered in the name of jesus christ father you have promised oh god that you are our refuge oh god and under your wings we shall take refuge oh god you have promised i got into your word my father that lord your truth is our shield and our buckler father we are confessing that for each and every one of us those who are watching even at home even those in the government even at the doctors even those who are in the medical field those who are combating this particular uh, uh, pestilence oh god father we are declaring that this is their portion in the name of jesus that you are the shield and a buckler to them in jesus name we are declaring that my father they shall not be afraid we shall not be afraid of the terror of the night we shall not be afraid of the arrow that flies even by the day oh god father we shall not be afraid of even the pestilence that walks in darkness we shall not be afraid of the destruction that even lay waste at noonday father we believe that dear master you are the one that is preserving us why because we are in christ and in god we are hidden and we are safe in jesus name i declare protection upon everyone that is watching over uh, uh, this morning in the mighty name of jesus i declare protection upon the church i declare protection upon the country i declare the pro uh, protection upon the nation i declare protection upon the young ones in the name of jesus christ that god you are our cover the god you are protecting us the bible says that even evil shall not come near our dwelling our homes are protected by the blood of jesus our nation is protected our county is protected god i declare that my father we are enjoying the grace of protection even this morning in the mighty name of jesus christ because oh god you have said that you are going to keep angels to have charge over our lives oh god father we are receiving the ministry of the angels who are watching over our lives they are defending us oh god from all the evil in the mighty name of jesus because in you we are secure in the mighty name of jesus christ we receive that protection in jesus name i declare that protection upon your life right now in the mighty name of jesus christ father we thank you and we receive that protection in jesus mighty name lastly i want us to be able just to pray for our those who are in authority that god may be able to give them wisdom may give them the courage god may give them the understanding even as they are helping us to handle this particular pandemic in the name of jesus christ the bible says in the book of first timothy chapter 2 verses 1 to 3 therefore i exalt first all that supplication prayers intercession and giving of thanks be made for all men for the kings and all who are in authority that you may lead a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness and reverence for this is good and acceptable in the sight of god our savior in the book of psalms chapter 32 verses 8 i will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go i will counsel you with my eye upon you proverbs chapter 19 verse 21 
my plans are in a man's heart but the counsel of the lord will stand i want us just to be able to declare as we are praying for those in authority because the bible instructs us to pray for those who are in authority that you may be able to live a peaceable life this issue of attack of corona does not give us peace it gives us restlessness especially if you don't have christ but i want us to be able to declare that in the name of jesus god will help our leaders he will give them the counsel on how to be able to handle these issues even as they are directing and helping us in the name of jesus we pray oh god in the name of jesus we are declaring my father for the spirit of counsel upon even those oh god of glory who are in authority in jesus name we declare that you are going to be able to give them understanding on how to be able my father to guide even the nation oh god we pray for our president we pray for the cabinet ministers we pray for those who are in health we pray for the direction of god give them the counsel oh my father that they may guide us oh my father in the name of jesus christ help them even my father as they tackle this pandemic oh god give them the wisdom of from above in jesus name father we pray even for the resources that they require let them be available in the name of jesus christ we declare that it is done in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you because of hearing our prayers. Let's just thank God because he has answered our prayers and we believe when we pray we have confidence that he hears our prayers and if he hears our prayers then he will grant us the desires of our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you because of what you have done. We give all the glory and honor to you. It is in Jesus name we believe and pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe God is going to be able to protect you even as we continue in prayer and God will sustain you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We worship you, O God. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lion of Judah. We worship you, Ancient of Days. We exalt you and we bless you, O God. For there is none like you, Jesus. There is none like you in the heavens. There is none like you in the earth. There is none like you in all creation. You alone are holy. You alone are powerful. You alone are our healer, O God. We bless you, Jesus. We worship you, O God. you are worthy of my praise. Oh, you are worthy of my praise.
Lord, you magnify the Lord because he's awesome. You are holy, Lord. You are glorious. You are mighty. You are the Lord God who reigns forever, oh God. We worship you. We exalt you. We honor you. For there is none like you. In Jesus' name do we worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Give a shout of praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Magnify the name of Jehovah. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's just appreciate the TOD. Let's appreciate the TOD this morning in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's just appreciate the Lord wherever you're watching us, wherever you are joining us this morning. Let's just thank the Lord because it's a new day. This is a new month. It's a new season the Lord has given unto us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 We thank God. It's a Sunday service. This is the Fountain of Wisdom Chapel uh, online service. Wherever you're joining us, I'd like to welcome all of you this morning and say feel welcome, feel at home, and please join us as we worship the Lord together, as we give our praises to Him, as we lift up His holy name, even this wonderful day that God has given unto us. So I just want to welcome you and say you are most welcome in the name of the Lord. So you're most welcome to join us even this morning. This is the Fountain of Wisdom Chapel. Uh, the Fountain of Wisdom Chapel in Loret, Kenya is uh, Fountain of Wisdom Ministries Church. We are here for our purpose. Our purpose is to reach the unreached, uh, charge the uncharged, and establish believers in the knowledge of the truth. Let me say that again. Our mission or our purpose is to reach the unreached, to charge the uncharged, and to establish believers in the knowledge of the truth. And so we welcome you to be able to be part of us and be part of this mission as we reach out to the people that God has ordained for us to be able to reach out to them. And so this morning we are so glad, we are so privileged to be alive in these days, to be alive in this season. We are so glad to be uh, 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 witnesses of what God is doing in our midst in Jesus' name. We know there are a lot of challenges that you are going through as a nation and even as a, as a world, the global village, the global world. But we know that our God is there with us. God has given us the promise. And last Sunday we heard the word of God. And we are so encouraged also again to be able to hear the word of God, which is able to minister to us this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Again, this is a wonderful time the Lord has given to us. I want to be able to ask you to prepare your hearts to receive from the Lord this morning. I want you to be able to prepare yourself to hear from the servant of the Lord. We are so glad that God has ordained his servant to be able to speak to us at this particular time. So I want you to be able to believe with me, even as we pray for the servant of God to be able to speak to us this morning. And I'm glad and I believe that you are going to be blessed. So let's just pray. Father, we thank you for your servant. We thank you because of your word this morning. We pray that, God, you're going to speak to, your, to our hearts. You're going to speak to your people this morning, Lord, and that your grace will be able to help us, O oh God, to receive that word. We thank you and we bless you, for we pray this, believing and trusting in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the people say, a loud amen. 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 This is from Kano, Nigeria, the fountain of Wisdom Chapel, Kapsoya, Kenya, Nairobi and other places in Kenya are bringing us greetings from Reverend and myself and from the church in Kano. Well, as if we will, I hope you are all keeping well. Amen. Well, we all know the times we are living in, but I'm sure we know that God knew that this time would come. I don't know your situation over there. Maybe you have a total lockdown in Kenya. Don't want to move around. We are supposed to be coming to the nation of Kenya for the East African Strategic Equipers Conference. But um, because of the things that have been going on around the world, flights shutting down, borders being shut, and everything. But we take solace, solace and encouragement in the words of Apostle Paul when he was in the prison. We are not in the prison, but we can learn from what he said in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. He said, though I'm chained, though I'm bound, he said, but the word of God is not chained. We thank God, thank God for technology, thank God that the word of God cannot be chained. The word of God cannot be bound. That word is increasing, it's growing, and I want you to know that even in your life, don't let the word of God keep flowing. I keep doing what God alone can do. Today I want to share with us on the path of the blood covenant. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you because the entrance of your word gives light and illumination. I 
As we get into the word, I humble myself under your mighty hand. I ask that Lord will grant me all chance in Jesus' name and let me afresh. And I ask you to impart grace, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to every hearer. Let every hearer also be a doer of your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Like I said, I want to speak on the part of the blood covenant. We have a covenant with God. God is the covenant keeping God. You are not just an ordinary person walking around on the earth. You are a covenant child of God. You must remind yourself of that all the time. Our base text is Zechariah chapter 9, verses 11 to 12. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pits. Return to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. Even now, I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. God said, because of the blood of my covenant with you. The power of the blood covenant. Let's say, let's say some things about the covenant. God is the God of covenant. God operates by the covenant. When the children of Israel cried out to God because of their bondage in the land of Egypt. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 2, verse 23 to 25, the Bible says God remembered his covenant with their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God acknowledged them. You see, when we cry to God, he remembers his covenant. God didn't just hear them because they cried out, but because that cry triggered the covenant. When they cried out to God, God said, God remembered his covenant with their fathers. And when he remembered the covenant with their fathers, what did he do? He acknowledged them. And the translation says, God took notice of them. I want you to know that because of the covenant, God is taking notice of you. Because of the covenant, God is acknowledging you. But we must learn to pray, cry out. God is a covenant God. In Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9, Therefore know that the Lord your God, He is God. The faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. God is faith. God keeps covenant. You see, we must be covenant-minded people. We must think in terms of the covenant. Amen. Some people think if they could just cry loud and long enough, God will do something about their case. No. What makes God hear us is his what makes God hear us is his covenant. It's not about how long I pray. It's not about how hard I pray. It's not about my tears. Thank God for your tears. God is moved by your tears. But what makes God to be moved by our tears and our cry is the covenant. You know, when we cry out to God, He remembers His covenant. That cry triggers something called the covenant. God works by covenant and not by feelings. Amen? God doesn't work by feelings. He works by covenant. Jesus healed and performed miracles. People moved by mercy and compassion. Blind Bartimaeus in Mark chapter 10 verse 47 he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The Bible says God keeps covenant and mercy. God's compassion and mercy are beyond mere feelings. You know, sometimes you can feel sorry for someone. You see, God's compassion is beyond feeling sorry for you. It's beyond that. God's mercy and compassion is they are based on his covenant. Based on his covenant. Not just like God, you know, God just pitied me. Let me just get a bit ahead of myself. You know, your healing is a covenant thing. Jesus is the mediator 
of a better covenant based on better promises. In Isaiah 53, the Bible says the punishment that brought us peace was upon Jesus. The chastisement that brought us peace, wholeness, health was upon Jesus. The Bible says, surely as born as sickness, carried as diseases, our infirmities. He took our pain, all our suffering. The Bible says, God laid on Jesus the iniquity of us all. He was bruised, wounded for our transgressions. God is saying, because of the blood, the blood, the blood of His covenant. You see, it, it's, it's when we pray God, when we cry out to God for mercy, the mercy of God is based on His covenant. Not on mere feelings. When Jesus healed the woman who had the spirit of infirmity in Luke chapter 13, he said in verse 16, So ought not this woman be a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound? Think of it. For 18 years, we lose from this point on the Sabbath. Jesus healed that woman based on God's covenant with Abraham. That's what God said. He said, This woman being the daughter of Abraham. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 16, that Jesus came to help the descendants of Abraham. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. Thank God. Through faith in Christ Jesus, according to Galatians 3 29, we also have become Abraham's descendants. Hallelujah. If Jesus is saying in Hebrews 2 16 to have come to help the seed of Abraham, the descendants of Abraham, Jesus healed that woman whom he called the daughter of Abraham. And the Bible tells us in Galatians 3 29 that we are descendants of Abraham, we are the seed of Abraham. In that same Galatians 3, verse 13 to 14, the Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the Lord, having become a curse for us. You see, everything that God did in Christ, everything God did was deliberate, was intentional, was purposeful, had a purpose. He redeemed us even in the time of death that Jesus died. He was carrying out redemption for us. The Bible says he has redeemed us from the curse of the law. How did he become a curse for us? How did he become a curse for us? By hanging on a tree. The Bible says, Cursed is the one who is anyone who is hanged on a tree. So when they were hanging him on that tree on the cross, they didn't know that they were fulfilling the word of God. But he had to die that kind of death. That death, in dying that death, he became a curse for us. And by becoming a curse for us, he redeemed us from the curse. We are not about to be redeemed. We have been redeemed from the curse of the Lord. Why have we been redeemed from the curse of the Lord? That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. Let me say this is up front, what the screen is. Gentiles are other nations other than Israel. Now, Abraham had natural descendants. The Jews, the Israelites, are the natural descendants of Abraham. And when God pronounced the blessing on Abraham, he said, Through you, all the nations, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Now, how will that work come to pass? How could all the families of the earth be blessed by Abraham? It was Christ that was going to come and fulfill that prophecy, that word. Because Abraham had his natural descendants, the Jews, the Israelites. But you know something? We who are in Christ are also the seed of Abraham, the descendants of Abraham by faith in Christ Jesus. So through faith in Christ Jesus, 
But because believing in Jesus, being born again, we came into that covenant. Hallelujah. By faith in Christ Jesus. So Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the Lord. Having become a curse for us by hanging on the tree, for it's written, cast on anyone that hangs on the tree. That the blessing of Abraham, the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. We who were once no people, we are now the people of God. We are members of the commonwealth of Israel. Hallelujah. By faith in Christ. So Abraham had two sets of descendants. He had the natural descendants. And he also has a spiritual descendants. We are the spiritual descendants of Abraham. We are his descendants by faith in Christ Jesus. So Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. What is the curse of the law? You can find the curse of the law in Genesis 3, 16 to 19. And in Deuteronomy 28, 15 to 68. We must know what we have been redeemed from. Especially in this day and age. With all the coronavirus and everything happening around us, thousands of us are sighted, thousands are right hand. As he has redeemed us from the curse of the law, we must know what the curse of the law is. And like I told you where you can find it, in Genesis 3, where God said to them, earlier on, he told Adam, of every tree, you may eat freely, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you don't eat of it. The day you eat of it, you will surely die. In that day, you will die. And when they ate it, Adam and Eve, they died. When God said they would die, they died on that day. But they first died, not physically, but spiritually. And you know, God said they died. So that spiritual death is the curse of the law. And God came in Genesis 3, 16 to 19, and God to talk about the fact that of the brow of your, the strength of your brow, you eat, and so on and so forth. But the key thing to know there is to know that spiritual death is the curse of Spiritual death is the mother of all the things that we see. But God said, in the day you eat of it, in that day you die. And that's what the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 5 that through the sin of one man, through the disobedience of one man, death entered and into the world and death passed on to all. What death are they talking about there? Spiritual death. Spiritual death is the mother of all other things that we suffer in the earth today. But the Bible also tells us in verse 17 of that Romans 5 that but through the obedience of one man, life came. That said, those of us who have received abundance of grace, the gift of righteousness, we shall reign in life. But the curse, we find that that is spiritual death. We also find the curse broken down is in Deuteronomy chapter 28. 15 to 68. Therefore, from those two Bible references, the curse is threefold. Threefold. Number one, spiritual death. Genesis 2, 15 to 17. Romans 6, 23. Amen. Genesis 2, 15 to 17. In the day you eat of it, you will surely die. That is spiritual death. And spiritual death is the mother of physical death. So the first fold is spiritual death. Amen. The second fold is poverty, failure, defeat, oppression. I want to encourage us to go and read Deuteronomy 28, 15 to 68, and Genesis 3, 16 to 19. That is the breakdown of of the of the curse of that spiritual death that eventually leads to physical leads to physical death. You know, we must appreciate what Christ has redeemed us from. Some people are scared to read about the curses. You do not need to read about the curses if you know, and when you know that Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the Lord. How would I know to reject something? If I didn't know what Christ has redeemed me from, if I knew that Christ has redeemed me from Christians, from poverty, from failure, from defeat, from oppression, then when I see failure trying to fasten itself on me or oppression, you know, the Bible says Jesus went about 
even those who are oppressed of the devil. So when I know that something is under the curse, something is a curse, it's not me being afraid. I'm like, Christ has to do me from this. So immediately I rise up, I take my place, I say, I reject that. That is a curse. I'm no more under the curse. Christ has redeemed me from the curse. The third fault is sicknesses, diseases, incurable diseases. As we see in Deuteronomy 28, verse 27, incurable diseases. Amen. So we have spiritual death. You know, we that are born again. The Bible says the second death has no power over us. If you're born again, you have overcome spiritual death. You are now alive unto God. Your spirit man is now alive unto God. You have overcome because Christ has redeemed you from the curse. I want us to take note of something. The curse was as a result of disobedience. The Bible tells us in Romans 5, 12 to 19, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, who is that one man? Adam. And death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, all men, not some men. Because all sinned. We all sinned in Adam. It's not about the sins you are committing now. Because Adam represented the human race. But thank God for Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus Christ is called the last Adam. Some of that scripture refers to him as the second Adam. It says, For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression. Hallelujah. But the free gift is not like the offense. But if by one man's offense many die, much more. The grace of God and the gifts by the the, uh, the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to men. The gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. But the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. Hallelujah. Verse 17. For if by the one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more, those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in Romans 8 12, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. For the Lord, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, has made me free from the law of sin and death. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Therefore, the covenant is God's antidote to the curse. The covenant is what makes us walk free from the curse. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about the covenant blessings. We have been blessed in Christ Jesus. When you look at the covenant, I want us to break it down when we talk about the covenant. Because like I said, the covenant is the answer to the curse. The Lord, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. We must understand what Christ has done for us. On the earth, you have two laws operating. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus versus the law of sin and death. You are either operating under the law of the spirit of life in Christ or you are operating under the law of sin and death. Under the law of sin and death, you have the curse. You have everything that the curse represents. Sicknesses, diseases, poverty, and ultimately, you know, premature death, and all those things. But when you look at the law of the spirit of life, that is where the covenant operates. So I'm going to break that down, and I want to encourage us, when it comes to the covenant blessings, I want us to read Deuteronomy 28, Verses 1 to 14 at your own convenience. But let's look at the covenant very closely. Number one, we have the covenant of life. We have the covenant of life. And this black 
we are talking about is spiritual life. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Now the Bible says in the book of John chapter 1, in him was life and that life was the light of men. In John 10.10, 10, Jesus said, He cometh no more for to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. What life are they talking about? They're not talking about physical life. They're talking about spiritual life. They say that we have spiritual death. God said to Adam, the day you eat of it, that day you will die. And when they ate of it, they did not fall down and die physically. So God was talking about spiritual death. Spiritual death is the root, the mother of all the things that we see. So also, when we talk about life, when the Bible talks about life, see it, understand, it's not talking about physical life, first of all. It's talking about spiritual life. It's not talking about physical life because when man ate of the tree of the royal blood, they did not die physically at first. They did not lose their physical life. But God was talking about spiritual death. That spiritual death was what would give birth to physical death. God did not create man to die in the first place. That's why the Bible refers to death as the last enemy that will be put under the feet. But that spiritual death was what gave birth to fear, gave birth to sickness and disease and poverty. That wasn't the plan of God for man. So also, the life we're talking about, you see, this covenant is the covenant of life. First of all, we're not talking about physical life. We're talking about spiritual life, which is also the mother of every other thing that we enjoy in Christ. God, Jesus said, the thief does not come except for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I've come that in the half life. That means that spiritual life, that life that he gives to us when we receive him, that is the life that is the cure for the stealing, killing, and destruction of the enemy. The Bible says in the same spirit of him, Romans 8, the same spirit of him that, that, that raised Christ from the dead, if that same spirit is in you, God who raised Christ from the dead, he also give life to your mortal body. Give life to your mortal body. So what is happening here is this. When I got born again, the Bible says in him was life. And the life was the light of men, and the light shines on the darkness. The Bible says he that had the sun had life. So when I receive the sun, I receive life. That life is Zoe. In Greek, it is the life of God. That life is not just about the longevity of it, how long it is, it is the quality of life that we receive. So this covenant is the covenant of life. We have the life of God in us. That life is flowing. That life is what is affecting our mortal body. That life is bringing healing. It's bringing health. That life is your light, your illumination within your brain cells. Within your mortal body. Our mortal body is the body we have here on earth. This body, the Bible says, a time will come where incorruptible we store up the corruptible. But now in the body that is still subject to sickness and disease. The Bible says the body is dead because of sin. The spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the same spirit of him will raise Christ from the dead, God in you, he will raise Christ from the dead to give life to your mortal body. So the Spirit of God dwells in me. I have the life of God in my spirit. And from my spirit, God is giving life to every part of my body. That's why you can lay hands on the sick and the sick can be covered. But when you lay hands, the life of God in the name of Jesus flows from you into the body of somebody. Amen. And you see, it's not just about you laying hands on somebody else. The life of God is in you. You can allow that life of God to dominate you. You have a secret and this is dominating you. Without sort of confusion dominating you, you can allow that life of God that is in you affect your brain cells, affect your mind, your imagination, your thoughts, your body. Because God gives life, not your immortal body, not the body you get in the sweet by and by. You see, the order is this when man sinned, when man fell, the death was first of all a spiritual death. That started in the spirit. And also when we got born again, the changes were not seen externally. The changes began inside. Your spirit man received life. The psalmist said that we enlighten my candle. You will light my candle. 
Your spirit is the candle of the Lord. Life came into you. Your spirit man became illuminated. I said that life is your light. Light came. You know, it's like when a house is dark, when there's darkness and there's no light. The first thing you do, you know, that is the earth was not for man, boy. And the first thing God said was, let there be light. So God comes, the Spirit of God comes into your life when you go born again. The Spirit of God enters into your spirit. And the first thing to do was to bring light. That life is your light. And then that light began to that light began to illuminate and began to affect every part of your body. Praise the Lord. So the covenant of life. That's the first thing I'm talking about. Romans 8, 1, 2. John 1, 3 to 4. John 3, 14 to 16. For God said not one against the God and that believe in him should not pray for that eternal life. That is the God kind of life. You see, there's plant life, there's animal life, there's a human life. But there's a God kind of life. And I tell you, God kind of life is superior to any kind of life. And that was the life that God gave man. And he said to man, you have dominion. You rule over all things. I tell you, having received the abundance of grace, having received the gift of righteousness, we will reign in life through Jesus Christ. We are not to have dominion, to have dominion over that coronavirus, over any disease. The Lord is of life in Christ has set us free. From the law of sin and death. This second one I will talk about is the covenant of peace. I'll just give it to us. Jehovah Shalom, Isaiah 54, verse 10 and verse 13. Isaiah 53, verse 5. Numbers 6, 22 to 27. We have the covenant of peace with God. Covenant of Shalom. He is Jehovah Shalom. He said in Isaiah 54, verse 10, for the mountains shall depart and the hills shall be removed. For my kindness shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace, my covenant of safety, of protection, of deliverance, my covenant of peace shall not depart from you, says the Lord who has mercy on you. We also have covenant of help and healing. Is Jehovah Rapha, Exodus 15, 26, Exodus 23, 25, Isaiah 53, 4 to 5, for Peter 2. Verse 24, 3 John, verse 2. In Exodus 15, 26, God says to the children of Israel, I will put none of the diseases on you which are brought from the Egyptians, for the Lord will use you. Don't forget, we have a better covenant, established on better promises, and Jesus is the mediator. What about another covenant that I want to talk about? Covenant of provision is Jehovah Jireh. Genesis 22, verse 8. And Genesis 22 verse 14 and Psalm 23 verse 1 The Lord is my shepherd to feed, guide, and shield me, I shall not lack. Hallelujah. The Bible says the young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Praise the Lord. Part of wealth, prosperity, and increase. God is the El Shaddai. God is more than enough. Genesis 15 1, Genesis 17 1 to 3. Deuteronomy. 8, 18, Psalm 1, verse 3. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the power to get wealth, that He may establish His covenant, which He swore to your fathers as it is this day. Covenant of fruitfulness, Exodus 23, 26, Genesis 17, verse 4, Leviticus 26, verse 9. Leviticus 26, 9, for I will look on you favorably and make you fruitful. Multiply you and confirm my covenant with you. God has a covenant of fruitfulness with you. He said in Deuteronomy 28 11, and the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your ground, in the land in which God spoke to your fathers to give to you. He said, None shall be barren among us until we cast our young before time. Hallelujah. Covenant of success. Deuteronomy 28 1. That the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. Joshua 1 8. Deuteronomy 28 13. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. Covenant of victory. The Lord is Jehovah Nisi. Exodus 17 13 to 15. Second Chronicles 20 15 to 17. Romans 8 37. John 16 30. 1 John 4 4. 1 John 5 4 to 5. Deuteronomy 28 7, the Lord will cause your enemies to rise against you to be defeated before your face. 
They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Psalm 60, verse 12. With God we gain the victory and we trample down our enemies. Praise God. First Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Covenant of salvation and deliverance. Psalm 91. We need that very much in this day. The covenant of Bible, Psalm 91, Psalm 27, Psalm 34, verse 6, verse 6 to 7, verse 17, verse 19. Psalm 91, 14 to 15 says, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Covenant of divine protection and safety. Jehovah Rohi, Psalm 23, Psalm 121, number 6, 23 to 24. Psalm 91, 5 to 11 says, You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand will fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, we shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any good come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Write down Isaiah 54, 14 to 17, Numbers 23, 7 to 10, 19 to 24. Is Jehovah a righteousness? We have covenant of known life. Psalm 91, verse 16, Exodus 23, verse 26. Psalm 91, 16 says, With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Covenant of guidance. Psalm 23, 1 to 3, Isaiah 58, 11. Isaiah 42, 16 says, I will bring the blind by way they do not know. I will lead them in paths they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and put their places straight. This thing I will do for them, I will not and, and not forsake them. Covenant of his presence. Jehovah Shammah, Hebrews 11, 5, Psalm 23, 4, Isaiah 43, 2. Hebrews 13, 5, for he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We have covenant of forgiveness. Colossians 1, 14, 1 John 1, 9, 1 John 2, 1, Isaiah 43, verse 25. He says God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins if we confess our sins. So don't forget, we do not relate to God by feelings. Sometimes you may feel unforgiving after confessing your sins. Remember that God he forgives you based on the covenant. It's not based on your feelings. If you are sick in your body, you ask for God to ask God to heal you. God heals you based on what Christ has already done, based on the covenant. Even if you don't feel healed, Get your healing, start on God's word, and that is how it is. As a random today, I want to say to you that God's names are both revelatory and covenantal. God reveals himself to us by his name, and he also made a covenant by his name. So at this point, we want to just stop here and bless the name of the Lord for the covenant. Remember that it is a blood covenant. The highest form of covenant is blood covenant. And God said, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners. In case you are bound today by sickness and disease, Jesus said, this woman whom the devil, the devil, not God, the devil has bound. No, this 18 years, or she will not be loose. In the name of Jesus Christ, because of the blood of the covenant, I loose you from every sickness and disease. I loose you from every infirmity. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have the covenant of protection. No evil shall be for you, no place shall come near you. If that will be fall at your side, then come at your hand. It shall not come near you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are protected by the name, you are protected by the Lord, and by the word of God. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord give you his peace, his shalom. In Jesus' name. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Amen. We thank God so much for this wonderful day and the word that you have just received. What a wonderful word that has come to us. We are so, so glad. I believe you are also blessed. Me, I was so blessed and I am so glad to be hearing what I am hearing in this season. 
we are so grateful. Please join me as we pray for the Lord's servant in the name of Jesus, Reverend Mrs. Funke Ewosho, who is our spiritual mom. She is our mom. She has spoken to us. I want us to be able to really pray for her this morning and just speak a word in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We bless you for your dear servant in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for that word that has come to us. We receive that word. Father, we receive that word by faith in the name of Jesus. We pray that God will strengthen her in this season. We pray that, Father, virtue will continue, Lord, to be able to go forth in the name of Jesus. We pray that, God, she will be more strong and more stronger. And the anointing, Lord, will be able to come upon her fresh. We thank you because of what she has said. You've spoken to us through her. We ask that you refresh her in the quiver of your presence. We thank you, my Father, and we bless you. For we pray this believing and trusting in Jesus' mighty name. And the people say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Wow, we thank God for that. Just want to give you the announcements. Once again, it's always a joy. It's always a pleasure to be able to be with you and hear the word of God. The first announcement is that we continue to encourage you and remind you that this is the Fountain of Wisdom Chapel and our YouTube channel is Fountain of Wisdom Chapel. Please just go to the YouTube and be able to uh, click that channel. Please subscribe to that channel in Jesus' name. Be able to get back to us. We'd like to hear from you and get to know that you are following us. And also encourage you to send us your prayers, the testimonies, the praise reports, whatever the Lord is doing in our midst. We'd like to be able to know. So write to us. We are so glad to hear from you. Please get to a note of that in Jesus' name. Uh, send also a reminder. Inform others, your friends, your family members, the people across the nations. Tell them that this is what God is doing. And we are glad to be here in the name of Jesus Christ. Kindly take note of that again in Jesus' name. Well, it's also now a time to be able to give. We are so glad because of your giving, your prayer, your support is helping us to go a long way in impacting many people and many souls and many lives. So I'd like us to be able to pray even at this particular moment as we give in Jesus' name. So let's believe and pray. Father, we thank you for the giving of your people. We are so glad because, Lord, you've given us this day. We pray that, Father, as we give, we give by faith in the name of Jesus. We give, my Father, because you have given us such a word this morning. We are so glad because, Father, we are living in this time and age. Thank you because it's a new season, it's a new month. We pray that as we give, Lord, our giving, my Father, will be able to extend the work of the kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you and bless you. For we pray this believing and trusting in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, have a look at the screen. See the details, our account number, our account name, how you can be able to give. I know most of us in Kenya, you're using the M-Pesa. Kindly take note of the M-Pesa details. The pay bill, uh, we use business number 400, 200. You can be able to click that and just as you send your tithe or your offering or any support that you are giving, please remember to send us a text for us to be able to know and take note of that. And we are so blessed. We thank God because of your giving. Amen. If you are writing a check, just write Fountain of Wisdom Ministries. Fountain of Wisdom Ministries is our name. And if you do that, you can drop it at our office. You can just bank it at the Kenya, our Cooperative Bank of Kenya, and you'll be able to receive your giving. And lastly but not least, I want to remind you once again, our prayers continues this week. That's on Wednesday and Thursday from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Kenyan time or East African time. If you're watching us from other countries, please take note of that. And we are glad to be able to have you as we pray together for this particular season. Go to the Facebook page. You can be able to follow us live from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. on Wednesday and Thursday in Jesus' mighty name. Well, until then, we are so glad. Have a blessed week. Let me please welcome 
the Lord's servant to be able to give us the word of benediction. God bless you and have a great week ahead. We thank God so much for the wonderful service that we have had. We thank God for the word and we bless him because of making it possible for us to be able to have this service. As we uh, come to the end of the service, I want to wish all of you God's blessings and to pray that as you go through the week, the Lord is going to keep you and to bless you and to help you in every way. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you all. Have a blessed week. <laughs>